morning, beloved of God. Good morning. Welcome to St. Paul Evangelical Lutheran Church as we celebrate our 16th Sunday after Pentecost. If we Oh, one quick announcement. Council has approved a new, a slightly new protocol for our worship. As long as you, as long as everybody's wearing masks, and as long as everybody is stand feet apart, then someone that is not in your household will be able to chant and to do the recitation. So let's hope that it's gonna that's gonna rescue our our worship. Uh, let's help us to get into the worship zone a little bit again. So we're gonna have to be a little more distant uh, than we are used to. So more or less stand feet if you wish to do the recitations and sing. This is as far as your aerosol will travel. So, for instance, Jim and Bailey are too close. Jim and Glenda, yeah. Jim and Glenda are too close. Yeah, if you guys move down a bit, then it's... Even if you are in your other pew. Even if you are every other pew. Oh, no. <laughs> you still there, you go. That's See? Awesome. As long as you are far from each other and everybody wearing masks, we can sing and we do the recitations safely. Yeah, big and big. All right. Please stand. <laughs> for invocation. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives our trespasses by nailing them to the cross, who by grace upon grace assure us of salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, you show perpetual love and kindness to us, your servants. Because we cannot rely on our own abilities, grant us your merciful judgment and train us to embody the generosity of your Son, Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. 
I'll quickly through this from announcing and we'll switch Logan. The hymn of the day and the Sandy song. I did. I think. Did uh, did I change it there, Dominic? No. I'll check. The first reading this morning comes from the book of Jonah, the third chapter. After Jonah's short sermon in chapter 3, verse 4, the Ninevites all repented, and God decided to spare the city. Jonah objected to this and became even more angry when God ordered a worm to destroy a plant that was providing shade. With a question that challenges any who are not ready to forgive. You, Jonah, are all worked up about a bush, but shouldn't I be concerned about 120,000 Ninevites? When God saw that the people of Nineveh did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them. And he did not do it. But this was very displeasing to Jonah, and he became angry. He prayed to the Lord and said, Oh Lord, is not this what I said while I was still in my own country? That is why I fled to Tarshish at the beginning. For I knew that you were a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and ready to relent from punishing. And now, O oh Lord, please take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. And the Lord said, Is it right for you to be angry? Then Jonah went out of the city and sat down east of the city, and made a booth for himself there. He sat under it in the shade, waiting to see what would become of the city. The Lord God appointed a bush and made it come up over Jonah to give shade over his head, to save him from his discomfort. So Jonah was very happy about the bush. But when dawn came up to the next day, God appointed a worm that attacked the bush so that it withered. When the sun rose, God prepared a subdued east wind, and the sun beat down on the head of Jonah so that he was faint, and asked what he may, that he may die. He said, it is better for me to die than to live. But God said to Jonah, is it right for you to be angry about the bush? And he said, yes, angry enough to die. Then the Lord said, you are concerned about the bush for which you did not labor and which you could not grow. It came into being in a night and it perished in a night. And should I not be concerned about Nineveh, that great city in which there are more than 20,000 persons who do not know their right hand from their left and also many animals? Word of God, word of life. We will read Psalm 145 responsively. I will exalt you, my God and King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day will I bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. There is no end to your greatness. One generation shall praise your works to another and shall declare your power. I will speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty and all your marvelous works. They shall tell of mine and the wonders that, and I will recount your greatness. They shall publish the remembrance of your great goodness. They shall sing joyfully of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, full of anger and abounding in steadfast love. Second reading this morning comes from Philippians, the first chapter. Paul writes to the Philippians from, pri from prison. Though he is uncertain about the outcome of his imprisonment, he is committed to the ministry of the gospel and calls on the Philippians to live lives that reflect and enhance the gospel mission. For to me, living is Christ and dying is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that, mean, that means fruitful labor for me, and I do not know which I prefer. 
I am hard pressed to sing with you. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary for you. Since I am convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with all of you for your progress and joy in faith, so that I may share abundantly in your boasting in Christ Jesus when I come to you again. Only live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent and hear about you, I will know that you are standing firm in one spirit, striving side by side with one mind for the faith of the gospel, and are in no way intimidated by your opponents. For them, this is evidence of their destruction, but of your salvation. And this is God's doing. For he has graciously granted you the privilege not only of believing in Christ, but of suffering for him as well since you are having the same struggle that you saw I had, and now hear that I still have. Word of God, word of life. Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said to them, you also go into the vineyard and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock, he went out and found others standing around. And he said to them, why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more. But each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner saying, this last work at only one hour and you have made them equal to us. You have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, friend, am I doing you no wrong? Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I chose to give to this last the same as I give to you. I am not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me, or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O
because no one has hired it. There is a movie called The Cinderella Man. I don't know if you guys watch it with Russell Crowe. Cinderella Man is a story about a boxer, world heavyweight champion. That be, the, the boxer, I forgot his name, but he becomes, he becomes the champion a few years before the Depression. Uh, no need to say that as any other heavyweight champion in the world, he makes quite a buck. And he lives live well, and he got married, and they got kids. The depression hits with the crash of the New York stock market back in the late 20s, early 30s, and he got in a tough spot. He loses everything. He went to to go to live in some basement somewhere. No heat. A lot of people didn't have heat at the time. His kid gets sick, so he goes up kind of tough situations. He gets sick with a cough. Uh, they are afraid that they're gonna die. They send him away. They have to depart for their children. And it's a very tough scene when, when the boy begs not to go. But they have to choose between the life of their young child or um, being together. He's a tough man. He's a hard man. You don't become the heavyweight champion of the world if you don't have some grit. Right? So he tries to get to go to work every day. Right? And then there is this scene on the New York Harbor where the guy who is the manager or whatever uh, uh, for the day he, he looks to this crowd right, that is probably like dozens and dozens and dozens of guys. But he has to pick three. They have three spots to work on that day. So he's one, two, three, everybody else. And it's like, it's in the crack of the dog. Those guys, are, those people are not sitting idle. They came from all over New York City to try to find some work. So it's not like they're sitting on there. Right? But there was only spots to three people. Everybody goes home. So like probably in one month, he would get a day of work once or twice. I'm not going to tell you the rest of the movie. If you haven't watched it, I'm not going to spoil it. But this is pretty much the reality that's going on in this passage. After the Roman occupation of the Palestine, see, everybody had their piece of land. Everybody could farm their own land, the land of their ancestors. After the Roman occupation of Palestine, things changed. It was the rise of the big landowners, the selling and buying of the land began to take place to fulfill the Roman demand for agricultural products, send the harvest to, it was like for small towns to, to, to bigger towns and then the profits go to Rome. Does that sound familiar? <laughs> All the resources were taken away from when people were actually growing their food to places uh, uh, to, 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 to achieve the, the, the demands of those who could buy goods. That has encouraged the buying and saying at the land, the ones with more whatever. The ones who farm better, the ones who perhaps have 
the physical capacity to work harder. They would farm more and they would grow more land and they would become landowners and managers of farms that came with the Roman occupation. Before it was not like that. Neighbors would like even help each other if one fell behind, like the Old Testament tells, you're supposed to, to, to help your neighbor or help your family member. Everybody was taken care of. The reality changed with the Roman occupation. So you have a lot of people who know how to farm, who work hard, who have grit, but they go to a place when harvest came. Dozens and dozens and dozens of more. And the manager has plots for trees, for flowers. Nobody has hired. So perhaps it's the first misconception of this passage. It is a passage that we struggle a lot. Because those guys work more, that they work harder, they, 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 they know why they are paying the same. Everybody struggles with this. But it is some context matter. Nobody has hired us. We were here. We want to work. There is no jobs for everyone. As far as I could research, that is pretty much the agricultural history of this country with migrant workers, farmers. They come, they have no land. A migrant can be either someone from another country, but someone from a different state. Who it's, it's migrant, it's when you have to go to a place that is not a place where to live, to find some work. It's how factories and farms and it's how this country was built. People will gather in a place, someone would hop up with a truck, and, he, and they're like, like dozens and dozens of people, but he only fits like six, or trucks were not much bigger at that time, right? So he only fits six or seven people on the bed on the truck. And you could see that old picture that depicts that. So the guys hop in the back of the truck, so there were a little more of there was sort of a line. Right? So someone would drop by with the truck, so the first seven would hop in. But all of a sudden, no trucks would stop by anymore, and there's two people on the line. You were rejected, you were not picked up, nobody hired us. Some places in the world, that's still how it works. If you, if you search the internet for pictures of migrant workers, you can see places all over the place in the world, more other pictures where this still works. I guess our generosity, not the same as God's generosity, Since the beginning of times, we give to those who deserve. God gives to whoever God chooses. How do we reconcile that? Because that makes us angry. Angry as Jonah is angry. Nineveh, the capital of the kingdom of Assyria, who harassed Israel through all his existence, threatening, military conquering, abusing this, the kingdom of Israel in trade. There was economic and military domination. They were always under threat. But they were not part of the covenant. They want to begin to worship God. So God sends Jonah in this mission to Nineveh to proclaim to them that they actually should worship our God, otherwise they would be doomed. First, Jonah doesn't want to do that. 
See, how we know about the book of Jumbo is that he spent three days in the belly of the fish, and there's so much more to that. It's a wonderful book. So Jonah doesn't want to go, and he resists. He goes to another direction. God, God has made up his mind, and he sends him finally to Nineveh. And he, has, and he proclaims, finally, that they should repent of what they've done to God's people, and they should worship God. And at this point, Jonah wants that to happen. That's the desire of every single of God's people, of every single Israelite, that God bring destruction to the Assyrian kingdom, especially to Nineveh, for all that they have done to us. They don't deserve it, God's generosity. They abused us. They took advantage of us. So Jonah makes the proclamation. And they turn. He works. The word of God has a positive effect. And they repent. And they decide that they're going to be as God is expecting of them, as God hopes for them. And God, guess what? God had made his mind. And God changed his mind. Yeah, God does that. God changes God's mind. Always, it's for the good of the people. So God changes his mind. And decides that he's not going to destroy Nineveh. And Jonah gets mad. Come on! All this trouble to get here. And I was like, okay, and now I want these guys to have fire and be strong and destroy everything. Come on! Nope. Am I not allowed to be generous in any way that I choose, says God. So there it is, folks. God's generosity is not the same as our generosity. God's Willingness to extend grace, God willingness to us to turn to Him and be together in Him is of His choosing. Doesn't matter if you have worked all your life, doesn't matter if you have worked one hour. Furthermore, Doesn't matter if you're never hired, if you're always rejected. I mean, who here, like, if you had the experience of never being picked up to the basketball team? Yeah. <laughs> I tried. No permission. Or for how many jobs have you applied? Like, there is that there is this meme that say uh, if you apply if you apply for a church job for the first job they require you to have experience so you're gonna have experience if you don't if you don't know what worked before then when you have experience you work a lot you're not gonna hire because you're not young enough <laughs> see God will hire every single one of us. That's the point that God chooses. As long as we came from this point, God will extend that gift. God will claim us. God has claimed us. God will give us any opportunity to turn to Him. No matter how many times we walk away, no matter how many times we 
all to the fifth stage of staying apart, of separating ourselves from God. God will still hire. God still wants us to be well and to be well together. And that's why God does what God does. That's God's generosity in Jesus Christ. Thanks be to him. Amen. This is what happens in this life. All right, so Sorry, I don't want to upset Tommy. Just go, just roll with this. We stand as we profess our faith in the words of the Apostle Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. 
he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last sin. Amen. Draw together in the compassion of God, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Generous God, you make the last first and the first last. Where this gospel challenges the church, equip it for its works of service, strengthening those who suffer for Christ, especially leaders struggling to sustain the faith of their communities amid COVID-19 restrictions. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Sun and wind, bushes and worms, cattle and great seas, nothing in creation is outside your concern. In your mercy, tend to it all. Give us a spirit of generosity towards all you have made. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Where we find envy and create enemies, you provide enough for all. Bring peace to places of conflict and violence, especially in communities still struggling with racial conflict in our country. Repel the actions of those in seeking injury and damage. Allow and protect the freedom of peaceful protests. Inspire elected officials and community leaders with compassion, creativity, and wisdom. Bless the work of negotiators, peacekeepers, and development workers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Reveal yourself to all we need as you are gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love, ready to relent from punishing. Accompany judges and lawyers, victims of crime, and those serving sentences. Give fruitful labor and a livelihood to those seeking work, especially those losing income and facing large medical bills due to the pandemic. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Even beyond our expectations, you choose to give generously. Grant life, health, and courage to all who are in need or struggling with COVID-19. Protect healthcare work personnel at the forefront of the pandemic. We pray especially for Lillian, Jim, Carol, Ron, Jim, Garris, Dan, Brandon, Dale, Herb, Tyler, Oren, Riley, Ronnie, Charlie, Larry, Kendall, Don, Red, Zach, Doris, Lynn, Chris, Cindy, Cindy, Bailey, Missy, AJ, D and Art, Karen, Jamie, and Becky. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God's beloved, you can now silent off your intercession. Gracious God, we pray for the ones among us who works at the education system. We pray for Kim Ellers, for Kim Hughes, for Anna Vieira, and for Tania Drew. God, we also pray for our children going to school and to college. We pray for 
Chloe and Zach and Bailey. We pray for Sophie, Mason, Cassie, Katie, Sarah. We pray for Aaron, Logan, and Michael. We pray for Rodney, for Brittany, for Margie, for Anna. We pray for uh, Lori and Cassidy. And Bryce. And Bryce. Protect them and Ella. And Ella. Protect them, Lord. Teachers and students as they go about their daily tasks facing new challenges and new threats. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. And Dominic. We praise you for the generations that have declared your power to us. Give us faithfulness to follow them, living for Christ, until you call us to join them in the joyful song around his throne. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, we entrust to your mercy, to Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Christ be with you all. And also with you. saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shared for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God's Spirit be with you here or at home, as you may partake this meal for the nourishment of your soul. Amen. Amen.
Please stand if you are able. Let us pray. God of the welcome table, in this meal we have peace on your goodness and have been united by your presence among us. Empower us to go forth sustained by this gift so that we may share your neighborly love with all. Through Jesus Christ, the giver of abundant life. Amen. Amen. Quick announcements. If you have heard about the wildfires in California uh, and the West Coast in general, Oregon and Washington too, uh, whole towns have been destroyed. So the need is that we don't stop being hit by disasters. We uh, in your announcements, in your bulletin that you receive through email, there is a link, and there will also be a link in the newsletter. Uh, if you'd like to give to Brooklyn uh, uh, Relief uh, an instruction how to do that to help those folks recover over there. Uh, the campaign for the for the Lutheran Church of Madagascar ministries are still ongoing in our synod. We have raised $14,000 so far to the ministry in Madagascar. With the difference in the currents, our synod, um, we, ha we have sustained it. We have made a difference, enormous difference, in the ways how ministries there could still be paid and could still baptize. It's, it's, it's the basic, it's the basic commission of the church, baptize and make new disciples. Uh, uh, Madagascar is by no means an overall Christian country uh, like we have here. So every new disciple there counts for the body of Christ. The Lutheran church has a big presence over there. But they are not be able to worship at all. They have shut down everything. Uh, especially more rural areas. Uh, and if you are not preaching, you don't get paid most of the ministry over there. That's how it works. And it is not online given either in the island of Madagascar. So it's been tough for people over there. So if you're able to contribute, thank you. It has made a difference uh, for the church over there. Big difference. Any other announcements? For those who have been away for a while and have not met Jewel yet, Jewel is a candidate for baptism. He's going to be baptized here. 
on um, October 25th, uh, take a time to meet him or talk to him outside. <laughs> uh, he's coming to our Bible studies and he's going to take our adult confirmation class. So he, he, he has been brought to Christianity. He's from Bangladesh. He has not been raised uh, Christian. Uh, so it's going to be one of those rare opportunities when you have someone who is brought to us by the Holy Spirit, who has been drawn to Christ, who has chose the, the Lutheran tradition by choice. Uh, uh, so he, 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 he brings to us, he comes to us by the Holy Spirit. And it, it is a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a blessing to our community of faith to be able to nurture uh, uh, new disciples. So, to get to know Gio, he's on Facebook. You can find him. He lives in Seattle. He's a software engineer, trained at Columbia University, correct? All right. So, join us for his baptism, either online or present if you want, uh, uh, on October 25th. Joyce and Judy were recruited to be his sponsors and they accepted. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor death, nor anything else in our creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. The God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another. The God of hope fill with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. The God of all grace bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen.